Hello, and welcome to a new episode of New Media Tech, the show where we talk about anything that's related to new media, whether that be podcasting, internet broadcasting, whatever you want to call it. We talk about all aspects of it from software, switching, uh, audio, you name it, we talk, we talk about it here. So uh, last week was IBC, and I was reading through some of the uh, announcements at IBC, and you know, there wasn't anything that was really wowing to me as far as announcements go. Uh, none of the vendors came out with anything big. I mean, prior to IBC, the Trucaster came out with a with three new products, basically uh, upgrades to the 400 and the 800 series, uh, and also a pretty incredible new piece of software that uh, is an operating system. The new operating system is very cool, does some really cool things. Um, 3D holographic, they call them holographic virtual sets, so it basically allows you to pan around with uh, a, you know, take a pano picture and pan around in the pano picture with people in there or or camera inputs in the, in the pano. Uh, pretty incredible. Never seen anything like that before. Uh, very neat. Uh, and so the uh, new hardware is you know another step up. The 8000 series did not get an upgrade. However, the software is upgradable on the 8000. But as far as the hardware upgrades, they didn't touch the TC40 either. That's left it the same. But the 400 series basically has two now, uh, one just under uh, $10,000 and one in the $15,000 range. And the 5860, which is now about $25,000 roughly uh, as far as pricing goes. So, you know, very similar pricing as before. Then they've added the lower end of 400 uh, to get under the $10,000 price range. So the low end still being the TC40. Uh, which is non-SDI, it's all analog. Still a great switcher uh, if you uh, have analog and, and can handle it with four with four channels. So other than that, there wasn't any big announcements. In fact, if I'm looking through the uh, stuff here from the IBC winners, it's kind of funny. The IBC International Honor for Excellence was Sir Peter Jackson. The Judge's Prize, which was uh, celebrating 100 years of Indian cinema, Special award was Vision Cloud. The Innovation Award was the world's first HFR 3D host for the Hobbit trilogy. So they're basically giving out awards to production companies at this point. Innovation Award Content Management was FAST, the File Acquisition and Server Technology. Uh, that is uh, technology. Uh, the Innovation Award Content Delivery is the nationwide SDN for uncompressed HDTV in Japan. Okay, uh, again, not uh, to me a, a wow thing. Best Conference Paper Award was the New Generation Scalable Motion Processing by Mike Nee, Mike Nee Snell. And then it was an Exposition Design Award for Best Larger Free Design Stand was for Nikon. And then the Best Smaller Free Design Stand was Active Video. And then the Most Imaginative Use of Shell Scheme Space was Longcraft. Again, not that impressed. <laughs> Sorry. So that was IBC of last week. Uh, I did read through some of the things that were announced, but there's very little as far as uh, new media type stuff goes. Um, again, I wasn't I wasn't really, really impressed. I mean, I'd be neat to go and see some of the, the manufacturer stuff there, but the big announcement last week was actually new tech. And I think they did it right. They announced it ahead of, ahead of the IBC show. So they didn't get uh, mixed in with the rest of the IBC stuff. So uh, very good for them. All right. So this is going to be actually a fairly quick week again. Uh, I'm sorry. I just don't have, I've been working on a bunch of stuff and I'm just not so focused right now on the content for the show, which is a very bad thing as a, as a show host, right? And the show producer. So uh, I do want to show you a couple of things though. Uh, the switcher that I've been working on is actually very, very close. In fact, it's actually working and i am uh, been using it and testing it and writing code. And let me show it to you. And uh, now you see it's blinking and it's still not because the way we dim these is through pulse width modulation. So these are all pulsing at different speeds. That's why you see them blinking. To me, they don't blink. The camera can't adjust for adjust for it but um you can see that we can change to different channels like this is me uh so if i come over here and i hit cut you're going to come back over to me and if you hit auto which is right next to it you're going to see a fade right there and we can come up here um and we can change the auto so it's a straight fade just like that or we can do a transition you see i don't have all these labels yet there's a transition uh, and then this is dip to color. 
and we obviously can pick the color. And then we have our DSKs. This is our fade to, fade to black, which, yeah, fade to black. That's exactly what it does, fade to black. Uh, this is the hot row. So if I want to go straight to camera two, I can go to camera two, or I can go, let's see, there's camera five. Um, let me go back over. So there's two, and then there's three. So you can see I pretty much have control of that. This row is user definable, and right now I have uh, only a few things defined. You see they're actually on uh, right here. That's the media player one and two. Um, I can turn off. Just like that so uh, you can see it's it's getting it's getting there now this is still um actually uh it's not a wide angle but it is in a case however i have it on backwards under the top so if i take this off you can see inside the case right there is uh the little board that's making everything work so again it's it's getting there That way it doesn't fall out. <laughs> so it's getting there. Um, and actually, I have a couple other things that are working as well, which aren't in this even this presentable mode yet. Um, I actually have audio controls now uh, that are controlling the audio levels on an ATEM and audio meter. So, I mean, it's it's getting here piece by piece. There's actually another piece that goes in either here or here. I haven't decided yet for the throw bar or a fader bar. And at the top, you can't see it. You see, maybe you see the wire right here. Uh, there's an LCD screen and some coders up there yet. And for the bigger versions of this, I have a touch screen I'm working on. So this is all getting there. This can control, this currently can control, and you saw it just controlling an ATEM and Wirecast together, but it can control an ATEM, Wirecast, vMix, uh, and I think that's it. It has some code in there for um, other stuff that hasn't been tested yet, so I can't say that it officially works. But my ultimate goal is to be able to control um, just about any software switcher with this, in addition to any hardware switcher, and in combination. So, which you probably can't tell is from this, it's also controlling a Wirecast, because I'm recording all this on Wirecast. Uh, so I'm switching Wirecast uh, at the same time, and I can uh, bring up lower thirds, all that from this box. So, um, all kinds of controls on from here over, and um, so it's, it's it's really it's getting there very very quickly, and um, anyways, well that'll be out very very soon. I hope to get uh, a lot more documentation. I actually have different size cases now. Um, I have desktop cases that are like you would just sit on the desk um, with buttons on the front. I have sloped housing cases with I guess what we call a keyboard case. Um, for this as well as rack mount cases so this is all coming together um it's all the same buttons and it's all the same internal hardware it's just changing and the buttons are all programmable so i can pretty much make it do anything that i want um one of the things you probably didn't see if i actually look back over is these buttons all pull off you see i don't have them all labeled yet but they just pull off and underneath of them it's just a little piece of a transparent thing you take it apart and you put it's transparent put that in and you snap it back on just like that, and I can make anything you want. So it's, again, programmable. Every button is programmable. Do whatever you want to do. Uh, in fact, in my case, I'm probably going to reprogram 7 and 8 on both these rows to do something a little bit different because I don't really have a 7 and 8 input on here. So that's the switcher. So every week I'm going to give you a little bit of update on that because I think this is, uh, my whole goal with this is make an affordable switcher that can be used with multiple different things. Like again, here I use both uh, Wirecast and an ATEM. That may not be the case all time. Um, I have downloaded the vMix demo and I got my switcher working with vMix. Uh, I have a couple other ones I'm probably going to work on uh, as well as far as software switchers go. And the other thing is I have tally interfaces back from uh, the ATEM now as well, and I'm working on a wireless tally. So if you have a room that you don't have, maybe you're running a new camera that doesn't have tally on it, but you still want tally, uh, you can put this box on top like on a, on a camera shoe, and there's no wires. Basically, all well, it needs power of some kind, whether it can be, it can be battery or it can be uh, plugged in, and uh, it's wireless tally using Zigbee. And the thing about Zigbee is uh, you can be, they all talk to each other, so if one's too far away from the base station, uh, but the other ones are not, it'll all deliver that over uh, to to wherever they are. So it, just, it's, it makes a big mesh. It's called a mesh. 
uh, and allows us to do a lot more distance, reliable distance using using Zigbee. So that is all working. Tech, that part is working really well. I do have hardware tallies now as well. Um, those take a little bit more time to build because there's a lot more parts to them. In fact, uh, somewhere here I have the hardware. Here's what this one of these boards looks like. Yeah, it's a hardware tally. It's a lot of surface mount. I've learned a surface mount. I've built my own reflow oven and uh, learning to do all that stuff. So it's been an experience. Uh, the electronic part's actually kind of easy for me because that's a little bit of my background. But the physical making of the boxes is not quite so easy for me. I'm not a mechanical engineer. So, uh, although I'm learning, <laughs> it's just been a slow, a slow process, but the electronic parts are all working good. I'm still writing some code. Um, I'm trying to build a web interface to it. So you can be programming over the web versus using the menu system. Uh, I'm making sure to make it flexible so you can change the color of the rows when they're off for right now. You see that they're yellow and, and green opposite of each other. Well, actually one's red. Red when it's on, the other one's green when it's on, but the background's green and the backgrounds are yellow. So I'm going to make it so you can change all the different colors around to be your style. So if you come from a switcher like a Panasonic, that's everything is yellow except for what you've selected is green in preview and what you selected is red uh, in live, then you can do that if that's what you like. But if you like to have a light green and bright green and a, a light red and, and a bright red on the row, you can do that just as easy. So the other thing you can do is if you look at the switcher now, I have preview on the bottom and live on the top, but some switchers are the other way around. They put live on the bottom, preview on the top. Uh, and I'm going to make it so you can change that around. So you can make basically switch to anything around any direction that you want. Uh, very flexible uh, and configurable. Plus, I also have live switches working. Uh, they're just very expensive. They're $65 a switch, a uh, little, little pricey to experiment with, but uh, I do have some and experimenting with them, and they will be an option as well. In fact, I've even considered taking this top row up here and replacing with all smart switches. So rather than saying this row does this function, these buttons do this function, you can have either a smart switch on the side that picks the function that you want to do uh, for the row or make these all smart switches so that as you... Uh, you can see, you can program them all, depending on what you're doing somewhere else, these can change. So, um, and I'm taking input on all kinds of things like that. So as I start adding in additional software switches that have features that are not like normal features of a hardware switcher, and I'd like to see a physical button to do so, I'm, I'm very open to making changes like that. So um, it's coming along. That's all I want to say. Uh, the switcher is definitely coming along. So I do want to hear from you, though. I want to know, like, about your show. I'd like you to, to uh, maybe we can do a little promotion with that. I'd like to talk with some other broadcasters, how you get started, what are your difficulties, that type of thing, and bring you on as a guest on the show just to get uh, insight from other broadcasters into the new media uh, talk. So if you have a show, I'd love to hear from you and maybe schedule you on one of our episodes to talk about, like, how you get started. What have you seen? As, what's been the most difficult thing for you? Um, are you doing things on a roll of budget? Are you making money on it? Trying to do what you're doing for fun, all different sides of, of your podcast. Maybe get you a little promotion on the podcast as well, or on your, uh, internet broadcast. I, I use them interchangeably. Uh, I understand that podcast is really a distribution method versus the internet broadcast, which is live, but, uh, they, they work together to make a symbian, uh, distribution method, whether you're watching live or you are doing, uh, it in, you're pre-recording it and sending it out via podcast. Um, or you're doing both, which is what we do. We do it live and send it out via podcast. But I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to get you on the show. I'd love to get your opinions on things uh, and make it a little bit more interactive. So um, if you're interested in that, please send me an email. Just send an email to newmediatech at tech-n.tv and uh, someone will get back with you. So like I said, this week's show is going to be a rather quick one. Uh, again, because there wasn't a lot that happened this week and I didn't have a guest to bring on. And it's just been one of those uh, last three weeks or so have been kind of busy with other things going on. We've made changes in the studio, but I don't want to go over them quite yet because um, I have something that I've built that I'm still testing that I want to, uh, which will be part of the switcher as well as an optional thing on the switcher. Uh, and I want to talk about that in a very future episode uh, and uh, kind of demonstrate how it works as well. So that is it for New Media Tech this week. Uh, you can um, follow us on Twitter. It's at, at TechZenTV. All of our, our shows are on there. And if you do tweet about the show or have questions about the show, make sure you include the hashtag 
New Media Tech. And uh, if you want to see the show notes, you can go to tech-zen.tv or you can just go to newmediatech.tv and it'll take you right to the Tech Zen page that you should get to to see all of the, the show notes. Uh, also, you can get all of our shows at uh, youtube.com slash techzentv. We have everything separated out by playlist. So if you're only interested, only interested in one of our shows, don't worry. They're all there, but you can go to the playlist for that show and you, can only, have to, you only have to follow that uh, one show. And uh, that's it for this week. We record the show live at 8 p.m. every Monday evening Eastern Time. And we'd love to have you in the chat room. And we do interact with the chat room. Uh, it's a little light tonight. It was, I started about 10 minutes early because uh, I have a number of shows to power up before our 9 o'clock big show tonight, which is um, Let's Make It. And this, this week in Let's Make It, we're talking about uh, stepper motors and DC motors and controlling them. So if you are into electronics, come back at 9 o'clock and talk with us. Uh, about the electronics. We'd love to have you here. Uh, again, that is our most uh, our most popular show every Monday night at 9 p.m. It's Let's Make It. We have a ton of shows on the network. We also are now part of Elixir.tv. And Elixir is basically a a network. So uh, TexanTV is a content producer, and we distribute our shows via Elixir.tv. So if you, if you have the chance, go visit Elixir.tv. There's a ton of new shows coming on Elixir. There is a bunch of sports shows that are coming on i believe fantasy sports and college sports and a bunch of other stuff coming in there in addition to our shows so that that network's going to start growing really quickly uh here in the next month or so so um go check them out as well elixir.tv we're there you can get us there just as easy and uh, we are on a roku app if you have a roku go download the tech zen tv app on the roku we'd love to have you uh watch us on the big screen on your big screen so uh we also are everywhere as far as podcasting goes we are a podcast as well uh apple whether you're on apple itunes you can search for tech zen tv and get all of our shows if you're like dog catcher then it's on your on the android device we're on there uh we're pretty much anywhere we're, i mean we try to be everywhere, and if you find somewhere that we're not, please let us know because we'd love to uh, get there as well. Uh, but we we shouldn't even be on your Microsoft device, your BlackBerry, we're on Stitcher, we're pretty much everywhere. So just let us know if you find out somewhere that we're not. But we'd love to have you subscribe, that way you get it all automatically, no thinking about it, uh, and you get to watch us wherever you are that way. It's on your mobile device, you can listen to us when you drive to work. They can uh, listen to us at your at your desk at work or watch us at your desk at work, whatever. Uh, that's kind of how I watch podcasts is I sit there as I'm working on things and it's running to the right. Uh, and I do run video podcasts always, uh, you know, most of them I just listen to. But if something interesting, I will look over and look at it. But it's it's my way of getting my content and my news updates for the week uh, for the podcast I like listening to, which is quite a few. I believe it's like 17 a week now I listen to. So uh, quite a few. Anyways, we'll see you all next Monday at 8 p.m. right here on Tech Zen TV. And that's 8 p.m. Eastern. Come join us live in the chat room. See you later. For show notes for this show, contacts, and more, go to the techzen.tv website where you can get show notes for all of our shows. We love to hear from our viewers and listeners. We have an email, a Twitter, and a phone number where you can contact us for each show. For details, visit the techzen.tv website and get the show details. You can also make a video and upload it somewhere like YouTube or Vimeo and then just send us a link. You never know, you may see your video in a future show. You can get all of our shows delivered automatically to your favorite device by going to your favorite podcast website like iTunes and subscribing. Each of our shows also has a YouTube channel you can subscribe to to get regular updates. Our shows are also available on most internet radio networks like Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. You can also watch and listen to our shows on Xbox, TiVo, and Roku. You can even find us on your Zoom.